Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to Africa Teen Geeks. And yes, um, this is our STEM digital online school. If you have just joined the class, this is a grade 10 physical sciences. Today it is the 2nd of July 2020, and uh, we are having our second class into term three. I can see that um, today we've got quite a, a, a number of people joining us in our class. Uh, yesterday we were doing physical and chemical changes and I hope that everyone know, got to understand and uh, all the concepts that we were working with yesterday because what's most important about this school is that we want to make sure, I want to make sure that everybody um, in the grade 10 physical sciences class gets to understand the theory, the calculation and everything that we are required to do as a team. And if you just look right in the corner, that's a picture of me. So um, before we get started, I just want to remind you guys of the few things um, that you must keep in mind in this class. Um, usually, you can get any textbook, it's fine. But uh, I usually use the Siavula textbook and the Study Masters. And those are the textbooks that I got absolutely free from Snaplify. You can also get that app. It's an app whereby you can get each and different types of textbooks there, all the textbooks, and they're absolutely free of December because of the COVID-19 problems that we encountered this year. So they've made it absolutely free. So you have no reason not to understand anything or not to pass anything. For all your subjects, you can just go there and get different types of subjects to explain what you do not understand. Okay, guys. Um, I also want to tell you guys that um, what we do in our classroom, we do not, uh, one, what I want to remind you guys as well is that um, in this classroom, we do not talk, um, you guys, you don't have to, you know, um, send voice questions. What we do in this class is that um, you guys uh, can send me a chat wherever I am, wherever you get stuck. We can just get started from there and uh, you guys can ask me questions there. I'll explain whatever it is that we have to do. Okay, so for people that um, are still new here. Okay, just trying to get my computer to get into the next slide. I just wanted to remind you guys as well of the adjustments that has been done I yours truly our government because they care so much about you guys and your education they've managed to adjust some of the yes, the syllabus has been amended for you guys so that you know what um, you guys do not have too much stuff to do for your assessment that is going to take place so what we know is that um, magnetism has been removed from electricity and magnetism you guys need to bear in mind and you need to make note of on on your on your on your study material because there's stuff that you guys just can avoid in order for you guys to be able to study what is important and matter and materials has been removed they've, they've removed particle substances are made of so these are all these things that are removed here are stuff that we are not going to be doing especially when we start doing our and all that stuff. So here we are. We are on chemical change right now, and have removed reactions in aqueous solutions. So we will not be doing this part of this um, section. And another thing that I want you guys to remember is that um, the following two topics have been moved from term two to term three. Hence, we have started with the chemical change because that's where we're going to be doing physical and chemical change, which is what we did yesterday continuing with it today and the representing chemical change all of that has been moved to term three so term three is all the work that we're doing and um, this is also the weights that you guys are going to have to be working with chemical systems has been completely removed so you can also remove it from your from your study material or you know your diaries where you've written everything um, we won't be doing you won't be writing about chemical um, systems but everything else excluding what has been removed um you guys this is a structure that you guys are on okay so today okay what are we going to be doing 
We're going to be doing energy changes in chemical reactions. We're going to talk about conservation of atoms and mass in reactions. We're going to do the law of constant composition and we're going to have the volume relationships in gases. So, energy changes in chemical. What do we talk about when you talk about energy changes in chemical reactions? What happens is that when a chemical reaction takes place, there's always a bond that has to be broken in order to create something else. For example, um, I remember yesterday we spoke about uh, um, we spoke about we spoke about decomposition. So what does that mean? Decomposition, for example, A B. Um, the reaction for A B will give you A plus B. So what I mean about a reaction that takes place to break bonds and create bonds, it means that A B, when you have it, it's um, it's a, it's an it's a compound that it's joined by bonds. So in order for you to have A plus B, there's something that has to happen. There has to be some form of energy that's going to break these two bonds from it for them to be A plus B, okay? So bonds break in order for new ones to form. So AB will give you A plus B. So that's what it means, guys. I hope that you guys are following, okay? So energy changes in chemical reaction is a result of break and forming of bonds. Hence, I just explained right now. Energy has to be absorbed for bonds to break, okay? So which means that bonds, they don't just break automatically. If there's, there's bonds that are happening and a reaction is happening, there needs to be some sort of energy that is required to break those bonds, okay? Energy is released when new bonds are formed. So what happens is they absorb energy to break the bonds, and then on the other side, they release the energy and a new product is formed, okay? Because um, energy is released when new bonds are formed because the product has a less energy than the middle stage that has been used to break the bonds of the reaction. What does this mean? It means that in a reaction, um, you know, uh, what we have is we'll have A plus B, then we'll have that arrow, then it will give you A, B, right? So here, what they're trying to explain is that um, energy will be released in the product side because in the arrow part, there's, there's, there's a reaction that's taking place to where bonds are breaking and reforming with each other. So during that time, a lot of energy gets to be used up there. So that's why the product has less energy than the middle stage because the middle stage has to break the bonds and form new bonds for the product to be formed. So that's what it means. And another thing that um, there's two terms that we're going to need to know, uh, it's exothermic and endothermic reaction. These are the um, reactions that we're going to be working with in this chapter, the endothermic and exothermic reaction, okay? So endothermic and exothermic reaction, it's a type of reaction, um, but under, you know, exothermic or endothermic, we can either have combustion reaction, we can have decomposition reaction. So um, these ones are the, are the main reactions that we're going to do. We're either going to have an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. So that's what we're going to deal with. But later on, for example, next year, there's going to be more reactions that are going to be added that you're going to get to know about, okay? So what's an exothermic reaction? The energy that must be absorbed to break the bonds in the reactant is less than the total energy that is released when new bonds are formed. What does that mean? This means that in the overall energy is being released, okay? So which means here, okay, the energy, there's not much energy that's used to break the bond, but what is released, the energy that is released is more than the energy that is used to break the bonds, okay? So that's it. Do you guys understand? I hope that you understand. If you're getting confused, just drop me a chat and I will explain it further, okay? So now that's the, you know, that's the exothermic reaction, okay? Oh, and an example, it's synthetic heat is needed for, for example, when synthetic heat is needed for a reaction, an example of an exothermic 
thermic reaction is for example an explosion okay they release a lot of heat um it takes in um, little heat but what is released is fire or an explosion or a bomb so that's an example of an exothermic reaction okay and then then we have an endothermic reaction okay in other in, in other reactions the energy that must be absorbed to break the bonds in the reaction is more than the total that is released when new bonds are formed so this means that the overall reaction energy must be absorbed from the surrounding so an example of this is a decomposition re decomposition reaction where heat is given off okay so in here you can even see you know um that um that the, the the energy that must be used to break the bond reactions is actually more than um, the energy that is gets to be released. So this one, it's an you know, um, which means this one it basically takes in heat and then it, it it takes in heat and it releases less energy. Okay. So these are basically the baselines of exothermic and endothermic reaction. So um, that's some important information that you need to know, okay? So let's continue. Also, oh, before we move on from this guy, can you guys um, guess for me a type of um, endothermic reaction? If you can, if somebody knows, you can just drop me a chat and uh, Let's see, let's test your minds, guys. I've given you guys an example of an exothermic reaction. Think of an example of an endothermic reaction. Hmm? Okay. You let me know as I continue. Okay. So now we move on to the next one. It's still energy changes in chemical reactions. So an example of energy changes showing, okay, no, I've moved it. Too far, okay. An example of energy changes showing that there is energy required to break bonds and required to um, form bonds. We can do an example of Mg plus O to give you MgO. So what is happening in this reaction? Energy is needed to break the O bonds because you can see here we need it to be MgO, but on this case. We've got O2 and we've got Mg. So which means that there is energy that will be required to break the OO bonds in the O so that a new MgO bond can be formed and the energy is released when the product MgO is formed. Do you guys see that? Ah, that is great, dear. Fire is indeed a form of um, endothermic. No, this one is an exothermic. Fire is an exothermic, dear. Yeah. Uh, let's try again, okay? Remember um, what I told you guys. Um, in, in an endothermic reaction, that's where you, you, you take in a lot of heat, you, you take in a lot of energy and release less energy. You take in heat, but you don't you release less heat. And for exothermic, that's where you take in little heat but you release a lot of heat, which is, for example, explosion, fire, etc. Okay. So, like the OO bonds in the oxygen molecule, so that new Mg bonds can be formed and the energy is released when the product MgO forms. Okay. So, despite all the energy changes that seem to take place during reactions, it is important to remember that energy cannot or destroyed okay that's the law of con conservation of energy is that um, energy cannot be created or it can be dis or destroyed it can be only be changed from one form to another okay so the conservation of energy principle the energy that enters a system will have come from surrounding environment and energy that leaves the system will again become part of the environment okay 
oh my word, there's some stuff that uh, has been removed here. So is vertical conservation of energy principle. Do not forget, because these are important terms that you need to know for your exam. When you think of the conservation of energy, just think, um, take con conservation as a, you know, a saving space, like a, a conserving place. So energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed to another. So it will always be there. It cannot be destroyed or created. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next. Okay, so we're moving to the next part that we wanted to talk about, which is the conservation of atoms and mass in reactions. Okay, so we've already spoken about the conservation of energy principle, that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to a. So the law of conservation of mass, what is that? What this one means is that the total mass of all substances taking part in a chemical reaction is conserved during a chemical reaction. The law of conservation of mass states that no atoms are lost or made in a chemical reaction. Instead, the atoms join together in different ways to form products. This is why a, in a balanced symbol equation, the number of atoms in each element is the same on both sides of the equation, okay? Here's an example. So you see here, no atoms are created or destroyed when copper creates with oxygen, reacts with oxygen to form copper oxide. So you see what that means. It means that these atoms cannot be destroyed. They'll always be there. What they can do, they'll just break themselves to form different bonds okay so and they cannot be for example you cannot next thing you have um four co's that form on this side if there's one co the side there'll be another one there that's why guys um you'll see as we go on along when you're doing balanced equations that um uh in order to balance the equation because sometimes you find that your equation is not balanced you 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 do not um add the number compounds, I mean, the number of the atoms. What you add is the number of the whole molecule, for example. Um, it's the um, it's atomic number, which is a big number that you'll see in front of your compounds. And that is what you use to balance the scales, but we do not change this. You can't take now H2O and now change and, and, and now minus the two in order for you to balance it out with H plus O. What you'll do, you'll just add two H to O and on the other side, you will have two H and two O's, okay? But we're gonna get more into that as we go along into chemical reactions, okay? So instead, the atoms join together in different ways to form products. This is why in a balanced symbol equation, the number of atoms of each element is the same of the equation, okay? So the total number of atoms of each element also remains the same during the reaction, although these may be arranged differently. So um, the reaction is here, right? So we have this one plus this one, and then we're gonna have our energy that's gonna break and create new ones, and this will be our product. So basic chemical reaction, guys, this side, is, our, is the reactant side. It's called the reactant side. And then this side is called the product side. I hope that you guys are following because these are terms that you will have to know. This is the reactant side because this is the reactants that you use in order for you to get your product, okay? So an example we can use is the uh, I'm sorry about this. This is a decomposition. Yeah? 
decomposition is. I wanted to say decomposition. Sorry, please do not mind this. I just can't scratch it out now. An example that we can use is the decomposition. Decomposition, guys, please. <laughs> Don't make the mistake of writing synthesis. Of water and oxygen into hydrogen peroxide. No, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, guys. Um, so here, this we have a decomposition reaction. This is um, hydrogen peroxide, and we are decomposing it into water and oxygen, okay? So, how are we gonna, um, here we are trying to test the law of conservation of mass. Conservation of mass, say. it says that the, the number of atoms do not change for both sides of the reaction, okay? So, um, it, it, so, each side, if here there's two here, there should be two coppers here. If there's two oxygens there, there needs to be two oxygens there. So now you want to test that, that theory. So there is an example that I got for you guys, which is the decomposition of um, hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to start on the left-hand side of the equation, which is the peroxide, okay? It's going to be 2H2O2, okay? Which is the sign for peroxide. If you manage this to this alone is a sign of um, hydrogen peroxide. So when we calculate the, the total atomic mass, because we want to find out um, if it is balanced on both sides. So when you now that we're working with chemistry, it's going to be very important that you guys um, constantly have your periodic table because in chemistry, that is what we use the most. We use the periodic table. Um, to calculate many stuff because other stuff they will not be given to you in problems but you'll be expected to know them because you are expected to always have people with you okay so here it's going to be four times oh, four times h okay so four times h because why do you say four times h it's two times this two that's here times h and we know that the the, the the atomic mass of um the atomic mass of hydrogen is one so the hence here we've got four times one and we add this to the o which is going to be two times two which gives you four times 16 which is the molecular mass of the molecular mass of oxygen okay and this will give us 68 u okay this is our unit for this of calculate and then number of atoms for each element number of atoms for each, it's four times h plus four times o which is what we calculate here so both atomic mass and the number of mass are conserved in the reaction so on the right hand side we have the total mass, which is this one. Remember, this equation is balanced. We're just proving um, um, by calculation that it actually is balanced, okay? So we're going to save the atomic mass. It's going to be 4 times 1, um, which is this one, the hydrogen, plus, yes, this is the hydrogen. It's 4 times, 4 times 1 because because well, two times two is this four, and one is hydrogen. The molecular mass of hydrogen is plus two times 16, which is because um, it's two times, um, so we are assuming to be two times 16, which is the molecular mass of oxygen, plus this part here, it's gonna be two times 16, and this gives you 68 U. So now you have proven that um, the conservation of the conservation of the law of conservation of maths is meant equation okay because sometimes they can ask you in a problem that um uh, show that the law of conservation is show the law of conservation with for example a problem of this nature so you see here it is i just gave you as a molecule there so that you can see how um it is broken down 
okay? So are we moving on? Okay, moving on to the next. And then now we go to the law of constant composition, okay? What does that mean? The law of constant composition. What it means is that in any given chemical compound, the elements always combine in the same proportion with each other, okay? In a particular compound, all samples of that compound will be made up of the same element proportion or ratio. For example, any water molecule is always made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So the ratio is two to one, okay? So we always know when we talk about water, even if you have it in an exam and they don't give you um, the, 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 the symbol and they just, you know that they're talking about H two O. So that's what they mean here is that um, the, the composition of certain um, compounds, that's how they always be. And you should know them because uh, they do not change. But it does not imply that just because the water molecule um, is H2O, water cannot be, for example, hydrogen peroxide like we've seen before, we've seen it being H2O2. So these are things that also happen, but um, they constantly form different compositions for them become a proper chemical reaction, okay? So I hope that you guys understand that. So before we get going, I just want us to go and check out Okay, I just want us to do a couple of things. Okay. <clears throat> okay, are you guys following me? So, okay, we're done with um, the low constant composition. But now, oh, there's a last thing that I wanted us to check out which is the volume relationships in gases, okay? So what they say here is that in chemical reactions between gases, the relative volume of gases in the reaction are present in ratio of small whole numbers if all gases are at the same temperature and pressure. This relationship as gay law sex law, okay? So this is a term that you guys as well. It's important because we'll be using it in the future. So, for example, in the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water, two volumes of hydrogen react with one volume of oxygen to produce two volumes of H2O, okay? In the reaction to produce the ammonia, one volume of nitrogen reacts with three volumes of hydrogen gas to produce two volumes of ammonia. So, this relationship will also be true for all other chemical reactions. So when you check here, okay, let me just try and, and explain it properly to you guys if you don't understand what they mean here. Usually, you know that <clears throat> when they give you a reaction, they're going to say, for example, um, hydrogen and oxygen gives you H2O, right? But you do not have the two here and you do not have the two here. You have to balance your equation. So the hydrogen gas is H2. The oxygen gas is O2, but on the other side, you have H2 and one O. So this O is left unbalanced, okay? So what happens thereafter? Now we're going to have to balance the equation in order for us to... So what do we do? We add a 2 here and we add a 2 over here. So now we're going to have four hydrogens, two oxygens, and on this side, we're going to have four hydrogens and two oxygens again. So these are things that um, basically what the low sex law, the gay low sex law means, okay? So reaction between hydrogen, so that's why they say here, um, and oxygen to produce water, two volumes, you see, two volumes of hydrogen gas react with one volume because there's no number here in front 
oxygen gas to produce H2O. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, please guys, I am here. Just go on your chat and ask me any questions and I will answer. So there's some problems that I want us. Okay, I want us just to check out. Oh, before we go any further, um, how did you guys, do you guys manage to do your homework from yesterday? <laughs> we had homework yesterday. Um, basically, I asked you guys, no, this is not the homework. Um, yes. Here is the homework that we had um, yesterday. So yesterday we managed to do the first one, which is melting candle wax, okay? So um, I asked you guys and you guys managed to see that this is a physical change. Why was it a physical change? Because um, it, it didn't change the, the identity of the candle. The candle was still a candle. It just melted out, okay? So yeah, it didn't change the the molecular structure of the candle okay so number two we have dissolving sodium chloride okay so what is this one okay someone did mention that it's a chemical change okay because when you dissolve um nacl it should give plus cl or it gives you something else with water so it does change the structure of this compound okay then now there's another one, mixing NaCl with AgNO3. So this one means that this is a chemical reaction and it's a, it's a synthetic reaction. So it's going to be this plus this will give you something else. So which means that this is a chemical change because it will give us two different, um, you know, together with different properties. So this one is a chemical change and then coming to this one tearing magnesium ribbon i tearing a magnesium ribbon this one should be a physical change because you're not changing the inside elements or or the atoms inside the magnesium you're just tearing a ribbon up this one remains a physical change okay then we have another one adding hcl to magnesium ribbon mm. now this one this This one is definitely a chemical change. Why is that? Because once you add these two has been changed, it's no longer going to be HCl. It's going to be probably HCl, watch what, or it can even be H plus Cl and something else, just depending on the action that because you're mixing things together in order to get right at a new um, product, which is a new compound, okay? So heating iron and sulfur, that's the same thing too. It, it, is, it should be a chemical change because you're gonna get a new product because you're mixing two chemicals together, okay? I hope that everybody had a good time, a fun time doing this homework and, um, we're ready to do something new for today. Okay, here we are. Okay. So basically, um, almost about the end of our... Um, Okay, this is
Okay, sorry about that, guys. I just had a, a little, you know. Okay, but I hope that everybody can still hear me properly now. If you can hear me, you can just raise your hand so that I can be sure that everybody can hear me. So, um, oh, thank you, Tino. So, um, here, what we're going to do, um, remember I, I told you guys how to memorize And then synthesis, obviously, it's small pieces being put together. So this is creating, this is destroying, okay? So you can just try and remember it like this. So when we look at number A, this is, okay, Na4CO3. Okay, so can you guys guess for me, what is this reaction? So you see, you've got one thing. And your result is it being broken down into small pieces. Can you guys send me, let me know what you guys think this one is. I'll give you some time to think about it. And um, we do not have time. So can you just uh, tell me quickly what you think this one is. I'm giving you guys a hint already. This is where you have one full body and it gets broken down into small little pieces so what kind of reaction is this come on guys okay but it's fine anyway um we have what somebody here for us decomposition great tino um it is indeed a decomposition reaction why because you've got one body and it starts rotting <laughs> and breaking into small little pieces and it becomes a decomposition reaction, okay? And then for this one, number two, you've got small little pieces and um, you, you, you end up with the whole body. So what kind of a reaction is? Come on, guys, we've got very little time left. I just want to test you guys quickly. What kind of a reaction is this one? Synthesis, thank you so much. So this one is a synthesis reaction because you've got small little pieces building one. So we are building here on the synthesis. So you get one whole body. So, okay, you guys do number six and also do number three for me. So for the following pages, remember this one. This one is very similar to what we did when we were doing the law of conservation of mass where you have to use your, your table uh, i mean your periodic table to know what each if if each atomic mass is balancing each other out so please guys do number c number d and do number three for me and um, that'll be it for today guys i just want to let you know once again that uh, this was your physical sciences classroom and thank you guys so much for joining this class with me and participating. I hope that um, you guys understand everything that we've spoken about today. Okay. I hope that you guys have understood everything about today, you know, from the law of conservation of energy to the law of conservation of mass. These are important terms. And if you have any queries or questions whatsoever, this is my email address t 313 at gmail.com and you can also get me on LinkedIn. I'm Chio Madondo and you can DM me whatever problem that you have. Let's do chemistry guys and uh, it's quite interesting. Let's see. Um, I guess we're going to meet again tomorrow same time and uh, thank you guys for a beautiful lesson.